Good morning, this is Dr. Rutledge, and we're going to talk about the present state of bariatric surgery by reviewing a, a relatively recent article on 28,000 cases reported from the American College of Surgeons certified hospitals offering bariatric surgery. It was published in 2011, um, but uh, some of the data, because of the large size, is really valuable. And we're going to relate that um, to the outcomes of the MGB, particularly in a controlled prospective trial, again published a while ago by uh, Dr. Lee in Taiwan. Um, there's a famous quote from Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, and it was the age of foolishness. And what I mean by this is that there are two poles, two opposite ends of the assessment of bariatric surgery and their outcomes. One is the safety, that is avoidance of danger, avoidance of complications. And that is one pole which you can put on one side of the equation. And the other side of the equation, the other pole, the opposite end of the spectrum, so to speak, is effectiveness. That is the ability to cause weight loss and along with weight loss, the concomitant resolution of associated medical illnesses, protection from rehospitalization, resolution of diabetes, etc. And so, as in the quote from Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, we can think of these two poles and the success of various bariatric operations. And we're going to look at these two poles in this analysis, um, recently reported on these popular bariatric operations, the band, the sleeve, and the Roux Y. Usually the lap band, the sleeve gastrectomy, and the Roux Y gastric bypass. And in summary, what we're going to find, I think, and what we're going to try and point out from this analysis is the band was very popular, um, but now its popularity is fading. It's, it's very safe, but its effectiveness seems to decrease progressively at uh, particularly at five years and by 10 years, depending on the report and the quality of follow-up, anywhere from 50% to 100% of band patients have failed the operation. The sleeve, we're going to find kind of between those two poles we talked about, is growing in popularity. It's safer, it appears, than the Ruin Y, but more dangerous than the band. And it showed early effectiveness at one year in many studies, but effectiveness and rise of problems such as reflux seems to increase, particularly at five years, and we don't have 10-year data. The Ruin Y is the old procedure. It's pretty effective, uh, but it is probably clearly the most dangerous of the three operations, the highest completion rate. Obviously, bowel obstruction is a, is a major concern. And it's the reason that people are busy trying to invent new techniques is because of the problems with the Roux and Y. So let's look at some data on these generalizations. And what we're going to do is derive an analysis and interpretation of the first report from American College of Surgeons Bariatric Surgery Center Network. And this was published in the Annals of Surgery 2011. Great, great paper, really worth looking at. And of impact is that it's 28,000 patients. And what that means is you have tremendous power. Sometimes if you look at a series um, of, say, lap band results, and there's been one recently, which looks terrific, yet in general, most surgeons agree in most countries in the world now that the lap band is pretty much a failure. So <clears throat> the problem with a single center or a study like that is not completely but partially eliminated by a study like this. And here we're looking at 28,000 bariatric procedures. And this is going to be what we're going to look at over and over again. We're going to look at these <coughs> different measures. And what you see on the bottom here is a progression from the band to the sleeve to the Ruin Y. Death rate, 0.05%, 0.11, 0.14. So, if we say that <clears throat> safety can be measured in deaths, or the inverse of deaths, then we see the band is the safest, and the sleeve 
and the Ruin Y are more dangerous. If we look at one year mortality, we see 0 0.08, 0 0.21, 0 0.34. Again, a progression from left to right, from band to sleeve to Ruin Y. So, again, we wouldn't want to use maybe only one measure, but if you say death and death rate can be used as a measure, an indicator of safety, you can see the band could be described as being safer than the Ruin Y <clears throat> and the sleeve. Um, here's some other outcome measures. Readmission rate, <clears throat> 1.7, 5.4, and 6.5. Okay, so again, same progression, exactly the same. Not one outcome measure, but outcome measure after outcome measure after outcome measure, band, safest, the lowest rate of readmission, sleeve, and then ruin Y. Ruin Y is the most dangerous, that is, has the highest readmission rate, highest death rate, highest one-year mortality rate. Reoperation, 0 0.92, 2.9, 5.0. Okay, again, exactly the same pro progression by another measure. Okay, again, mean length of stay, 0 0.7, 2.9, and 2.6. Uh, slightly out of range, but pretty much, again, seeing the same thing. These are the actual charts from the paper itself, and just uh, include another group, which is open root Y gastric bypass, but we'll kind of skip over them for a second. Again, readmission, reoperation, 30-day mortality. But uh, again, if you look, um, even myocardial infarction, which is very uncommon, we, we give thanks for. Um, none in band, sorry, none in this, this is, I'm uh, sorry about the columns, but, um, so look at pulmonary embolism, 0 0.02 for band, 0 0.32 for sleeve, and 0 0.12 for Rue and Y. Here if we look at pneumonia, 0.05 for band, 0.32 for sleeve, 0.4 for Ru and Y. So now we're back on track with that same progression. Unplanned reintubation. So that's 0.06 for band, 0.32 for sleeve, 0.41 for Ru and Y. Ventilator dependency, um, none and low for a band. So there we don't have that same progression. Urinary tract ma matches, you see um, 0.16 for band, 0.53 for sleeve, and 0.72 for Ru and Y. Um, surgical site infection, again, this matches exactly like we, what we were saying before. 0.5 for band, 0.7 for sleeve, 1.5 for Ru and Y. And for deep infections, 0 0.06, 0 0.21, 0 0.25. So you can see, again, not perfect, but it's very, very consistent, very consistent across the board. So that's an analysis in this paper of the uh, one end of the spectrum, that's safety. And so what we see from that is safest band, less safe in comparison sleeve, and most dangerous Ruin Y. So that's safety, and we'll use that as a rough measure. The second thing is, what about effectiveness? What about effectiveness? So again, we only have 12 months, but again, 28,000 patients, but so there, there, it's not a perfect study, but we're going to look at reduction in BMI. Reduction in BMI. And so here, we see that band is the weakest. Sleeve is second in strength, and Ruin Y is the most effective at 12 months. And as is pointed out in this slide, we know that at five years and 10 years, the band fails in anywhere from 50% up to 100% of cases. And the data on sleeve is similar for the five year data. We're starting to see significant failures and reoperations. 
Here's an example from that paper of the effectiveness, again, the outcome, the other end of the spectrum. We had safety, and now we're talking about effectiveness. So we're looking at hyperlipidemia resolution. And we see at one month and six months, the sleeve is doing quite well. The band is the least effective, but by 12 months, the sleeve is beginning to fail. The sleeve at 12 months is as poor in its effectiveness in treating hyperlipidemia and causing resolution as lap band. And again, if we were to project this out five years and ten years, the sleeve and the, began, and the band begin to look alike, and they're both restrictive procedures. So it wouldn't be surprising to find this kind of trend. Another concern which is reported is the percent of patients with esophageal reflux. And again, we see that initially the band, the sleeve, and the Roux and Y are all very effective in the short term, between one and six months, at helping resolve the incidence of gastroesophageal reflux. But note that the sleeve is beginning to fail, and other data suggests that the sleeve and the band are both associated with long-term risk of this potentially serious complication. Maybe most important is this data where we look at the resolution of diabetes. And at one month, it's very exciting to see sleeve having such an excellent result. By six months, sleeve and Roux and Y seem very comparable with lap band being the least effective. Lap band is least effective. But by 12 months, and again, imagine five years and further out, by 12 months, the lap band and the sleeve are looking very similar. The Roux and Y maintains its effectiveness. But here we can see the warnings that the effectiveness of the sleeve begins to deteriorate and to follow the trend potentially of the lap band. So again, this is an analysis of that study. And what we want to do is say that we maybe could do better. Maybe we could have better choices. And so we want to talk about a study comparing the sleeve, and think of the sleeves we were just looking at, and its location on the spectrum with the mini gastric bypass. The ACS study we talked about, 28,000 patients, leads us to the following conclusions. The lap band is safe, pretty safe, pretty, pretty darn safe. But it's being abandoned widely around the world because of its five and 10 year failure rate. And as I say, uh, a treatment that's 50 to 100% fails at five or 10 years is not a very good treatment. I think most people, most surgeons and patients would agree. The sleeve is clearly more dangerous than the band and appears, as far as effectiveness, to be following its track towards failure, at least in this large-scale study. Admittedly, there are other studies from individual centers, but you wonder whether or not they are affected by bias, and maybe this study is more realistic about the actual outcomes. Many of the early studies said the lap band was great, and it's only really the, the, the more recent large-scale studies with longer-term follow-up have been able to uncover the hidden failures in lap band, and I would say that this study suggests the sleeve may well follow the band as far as its failure over time. We already saw it here in the lipid and diabetic patients. What can we say about the Roux and Y, the old gold standard? Well, it's more effective, more effective than the band and the sleeve, but studies clearly show that there is long-term weight regain and recurrence of diabetes in the Roux and Y. And unequivocally, it's the most dangerous bariatric surgery in this study by almost every measure. In short, the band is safe, but it fails. The sleeve has higher danger than the band and looks like it's going to have a progressive five-year failure rate. In some areas, it looks like it's going to match a failure rate as high as the lap band. The Roux and Y, definitely more effective, but clearly it's the most dangerous of the three operations. 
And so this brings up the need of maybe improved safety and effectiveness. And so we'd like to look at the mini gastric bypass, in particular one study which provides controlled prospective randomized trial. This is gastric bypass versus sleeve gastrectomy. A controlled prospective trial by Dr. Lee and his group at the uh, National Taiwan University Hospital in Taiwan, the Republic of China. And their objective in this study was to look at two weight reducing operations, that is sleeve and mini gastric bypass. And the idea being that they're similar, but the mini gastric bypass adds the effect of duodenal excuse, exclusion or duodenal bypass. And of note, this particular study is a double blind and randomized controlled trial. And uh, I apologize for this slide, but basically we're trying to emphasize the value of this is it's a double blind randomized controlled trial. In summary, of the 60 patients enrolled at 12 months, they all were followed up. Remission of type 2 diabetes, we're going to emphasize this several times, was 93% in the MGB and 14 in sleeves. The mini gastric bypass patients lost more weight, had a lower waist circumference, lower glucose levels, lower hemoglobin A1C, and lower blood lipid levels than the sleeves, and no complications occurred in either group. Again, remission of type 2 diabetes, 93% in MGB, 47% in sleeve. The MGB patients lost more weight, lower waist circumference, had lower fasting glucose, lower hemoglobin A1C, and lower blood lipid levels than the sleeve. Lost more weight, narrower waist, lower fasting glucose than the sleeve. And again, the difference, 93% success MGB, 47% for sleeve. The sleeve is popular now. It's relatively dangerous and show the banned signs of five-year failure and new onset of GERD in up to 30%. The MGB is short, simple, reversible, and revisable operation that may be up to twice as effective as the sleeve and has excellent long-term durability. The data from the American College of Surgeons Center suggests that there is a need for a safe and effective operation. We know the ruin Y is the most effective, but it comes with concomitant dangers. We know the band is the safest, but it comes with very limited long-term effectiveness. The sleeve is in between, but appears to have a danger profile that's close to that of the ruin Y and an ineffectiveness that's close to the band at five years. The mini gastric bypass in comparison to the sleeve in this study was twice as effective. And many other studies have shown that it's a relatively safe and simple procedure. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to send me some questions on this interesting topic.